Hello everyone, my name is Bai Chen, currently a PhD student from the Chinese University of Hong Kong, supervised by Professor Yu. I would like to present our paper, Closed Key DM Model Orchestration Framework for Data Flow Architecture Accelerators for ICKI 2023. First of all, I would like to thank my co-authors and supports from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology and Dhamma Academy, Alibaba Group. My presentation will be divided in five parts. I will first give the brief introduction and the preliminaries. A third aspect, I will present our class E framework. And fourth, I will detail our experimental results. And the last, I will conclude our presentation. So one trend of our AI model is that the AI model's parameters becomes much more and more. As the figure shows, the x-axis denotes the timeline, the y-axis denotes parameters from 2014 to 2021. Across different models, we can see the parameters have become more and more. So we'll give the summary here. The AI models becomes larger and the computational scaling is conducted via deeply stacked layers. And we can see the emerging capabilities because of Ericsson innovations. So corresponding to the AI model scaling trends, we can see that our AI accelerators also scale and uh, it supports the scaling of our AI models. So at this figure shows, the figure shows the peak power versus peak performance for commercial AI accelerators. So we draw some conclusions here. The scaling trend following two aspects. The first we call Brownian scaling, a second that we call scalable scaling. So the Brownian scaling is said that we scale on-chip hardware resources, for example, the on-chip SRAM, the functional units, etc. But given the power war or memory war, we cannot ultimately scale on-chip hardware resources without any sacrifice. So we scale in another kind of manner that we call scalable scaling. So we scale the accelerators via a narrow round shape. So as the reference work said that, we can scale our DNA accelerators and to support the large AI models. And here we focus on depth architecture accelerators, which are new kind of scalable scaling driven AI accelerators. So a fundamental distinction from previous scalable DNA accelerators is the execution model. It permits a synchronous mechanism we have multiple instructions operating on multiple data streams simultaneously, that we call it MIMD. And the data flow execution model can be stated formally. The executability and the execution of instructions is solely determined based on the availability of input operands to the instructions. So in other words, we compute only what is relevant to input proactively for data flow architecture accelerators. So what is the model extraction? It's said that we determine how to partition, schedule, and map a DNA model to scalable DNA accelerators. So specifically, the partition said that we partition DM computation graph into mu OPs. And because of the partitioning, we can exploit higher execution parallelism. And for the scheduling, we decide time slots for each mu OP in order to attain the promising mix back. And for the mapping, we decide the allocation of accelerator for mu OP. So this figure gives the, the overview of DM model extraction. Given the Google Linux, especially the Inception V3 module as an example, we first partition the model into several mu OPs. And we schedule mu OP with respect to different time slots. And after that, we map different mu OPs to particular DM accelerators. So previous methodologies have been proposed to solve DM model orchestration, the CM partition, Tangram, Atomic Data, et cetera, but they are proposed for traditional scalable DM accelerators rather than data flow architecture accelerators. So here we give a comparison between the two different architecture accelerators. The distinction can be stated that synchronization is removed in data flow architecture accelerators. And the distinction leads to exceptionally higher performance efficiency of data flow architecture accelerators. So this figure gives the overall. We partition the Google Linux Inception V3 model into several different MUPs. 
And here, the figure also demonstrates some example dependencies. So for traditional scaffolding accelerators, a schedule mu p is per round. And between different rounds, it injects some synchronization latency. But for data flow architecture accelerators, we can execute the producer, the consumer mu p without any delay once we find that the producer mu p is finished. And there's no synchronization. So we can see there's a great performance benefit compared to traditional scalable accelerators. So here we draw some conclusions. The first is that for traditional scalable accelerators, MOPs are scheduled per round. Synchronization latencies are produced between adjacent rounds. The bad MOP determines the time interval of a round. But for DEFL architecture accelerators, nearly no synchronizations. And we have high MOPs throughputs. So the figure demonstrates the two scheduling that we call them as soon as possible and as late as possible. So as soon as possible scheduling, we schedule meal piece as soon as possible by following the equation one. And for as late as possible, we can schedule the meal piece as late as possible following equation two. So we give the problem formulation formally. And first of all, we draw some definitions. What is meal p? Meal p refers to the execution granularity of any individual accelerator in data flow architecture accelerators. And a MOP precedence constraint state that the consumer MOP should not begin to execute before the producer MOPs are completed. And for the accelerator, in data flow architecture accelerators, we state them. Accelerator executes one MOP at a time until its completion. Other MOPs cannot preempt the execution. So we draw three problems here. The first is the partition. A partition state that we partition the computation of DL model into mil OPs, aiming to maximize utilization of each accelerator and achieve low balancing, give a set of constraints. And for scheduling, we allocate time slots for mil OPs, aiming to minimize the mixed band. And for mapping, we allocate accelerators for mil OPs, aiming to minimize the not communication cost during data flow executions. So for cross key, Accept two inputs, the DL model and data architecture accelerator specification, and then it adopts base optimization based entropy guided partition to partition the DL model into several MOPs. And we formulate the MOP scheduling and mapping via unified formulation, and we decouple the scheduling and the mapping through ILP model and MLP model. And once we find that base optimization budget is met, so we output the DL model orchestration solution. For partition, we should satisfy two requirements. The first is that the computation of HMLP should fully utilize the accelerator's resources. A second aspect is the computation listing of, of MU OPs should be as close as possible to achieve load balancing. So how do we partition? We use a unified representation of the partition strategy. So we give an example of a convolution layer with, with shape is still known as a seven as a six element tuple and we ignore the batch the batch element n here. So R S P Q C K refers to the output channels width and height, the input channels width and height, and output channels and the input channels, etc. And we use the four element tuple, H, W, I, C, and O C to partition the output tensor. So the partition can be illustrated with this graph. Given a seven by seven by three infrared map and it's convolved with three by three by three by five convolution kernels. So we can output five by five by three output feature maps. And we partition with two, 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 three, this four element tuple. So we can generate no more than 16 distinct types of mu OPs or mu tensors. And formally, we give the mu tensor shapes and numbers with this table. So in, all, in total, there are 16 different mu tensor shapes and their numbers can be formally computed from these equations. So regarding the two requirements, first, we, we make the four element tuple that each element can be divisible by corresponding P 
dimensions to fully utilize the accelerator's resources. And for the second requirement, we adopt a batch optimization based design space exploration solution because there's no clear fall between the number of mu p's, the shape of mu p's, the mu tensors to the final mix band. So the overall action flow for bio based entropy guided partition is shown here. And first of all, we partition the geo model with the four element topo. I will schedule, map, and execute mu OPs. And then we evaluate with respect to the equation three here. And then we add the exploration solutions into the exploration set. And we construct Gaussian process model. And then we conduct a search with respect to the upper confidence band. And the equation three is modeled with the entropy. Because if we can maximize this entropy equation, we can achieve the second requirement. They demonstrate that each latency of mu p can be much close as possible. And then we also divide by alpha multiplied by mixed band in order to minimize the mixed band. And alpha is a normalization coefficient. So for the unified formulation for mu p scheduling and mapping, our outcome flow can be concluded into six steps. First, we acquire the upper bound of the mixed band by disk scheduling, and then we acquire the scheduling flexibility by as soon as possible and as late as possible scheduling. And third, we define the solution with a binary tensor. And fourth, we construct a constraint for the scheduling and mapping. And fifth, we construct optimization objectives. And last, we solve the model with the off-the-shelf solvers. So we acquire the upper bound with respect to the least scheduling, it states that it can achieve the two minus i over one over a times the optimum expand for the architecture of accelerators, where a is the number of individual accelerators. We you know the upper bound as t, the mu p set v, and the accelerator vector a here. And each element of accelerator a refers to one accelerator. So binary tensor X is with the size of V multiplied by T multiplied by A. And its binary is characterized by the equation four here. So we list a set of constraints. First of all, we list the mu p constraints, and then we list mu p's precedence constraints. And, fifth, and last, we list a compute, computing resource constraints. So regarding the constraint here, we also formulate the network on chip communication optimization budget, which is demonstrated with this figure. Suppose that our knock is with mesh topology and XYYX routing alpha. And here, the accelerator color with yellow holds UOP, and the accelerator color with green holds UQ, and the UP is the producer of the consumer UQ. And there could be possible, multiple possible not routing paths. It depends on congestions, packets, et cetera. However, we can uniformly formulate the not communication cost with e equation nine here. So more realistic model could include the transmitted data volume size. And this equation, we can see that is a sum, it's a sum with respect to two absolute differences. Where UP's assigned accelerator is at x1, y1 coordinate, and the accelerator for UQ is at x2, y2 coordinate. So we formulate the non-communication course with respect to these equations. So equation 10 and equation 11, they compute the coordinates of the accelerator. And equation 12 calculates some constraints like the two different mu p's cannot be issued to the same accelerator simultaneously. And as the equation 13 here demonstrates how can we attain the coordinate index, the accelerator index. And the entire communication course of NOG can be carried by equation 14 here. So we construct the complete equation with respect to equation 15, and we can solve with off-the-shelf solvers. The length of a single time slot is determined by the minimum of LUI here, 
where beta is a coefficient to trade off TFC. But some limitations restrict us to solve the equations, the LP models with the off the shelf solvers. The first limitation that it costs high runtime to construct a constraint like equation eight. And the second constraint is that nonlinearity in equation nine, 10, and 11 restrict us to use off the shelf solver. So we propose a two stage scheduling and mapping to common methodology accordingly. And uh, it's the same as the unified formulation, but we decouple the unified formulation with binary matrix X and Y and construct the schedule model and solve them with off-shelf solvers and a mapping model solved with off-the-shelf solvers separately. So this demonstrates the decoupling. And we can formally formulate the scheduling and the mapping with respect to the matrix X and matrix Y here. And we can solve the different sub-problems separately with the off-the-shelf solvers. And in order to transfer the nonlinearity equations into linear equations, so we introduced newly incorporated the six rational numbers, four integer variable, variables, et cetera, and a binary variable Z here. So we can formulate the complete equation and uh, we constrain and we set some uh, parameters, some constants like uh, epsilon and uh, delta in our MLP model. And for our experiments, we build an in-house simulator for the DAFO architecture of cell raisers. We use Mastro as a performance model for individual cell raisers. We use n data flow at the front end of DL models, and we implement the partition based on the framework. We use Grobby as off-the-shelf solver. We conduct the experiments with VG16, VG19, etc., and we set different topologies of DN of the DAFO architecture accelerators in order to denote different problem sizes. And because there's no previous masters for the amount of acceleration, so we set up our baselines based on 10 gram and atomic data flow with rationales. We term them as baseline one and baseline two. So this table is show the experimental results are uh, three by three topology. And uh, we can see that cross K outperforms previous methodologies. And this table lists the experimental results with respect to four by four topology and a five by five topology. For the detailed results, please check our paper. So here we give the summary. In the three by three topology, compared to baseline one and baseline two, the solution given by classic outperforms by an average of 44.42% and 9.03% for all DNA workloads. In the four by four topology, numbers of 39% and 9.29%. And cross key costs higher runtime than baseline due to the cross key leverages much time to solve the scheduling and mapping in the two stage methodology. Because previous baseline that we implement use heuristic methods that will be solved the problems much more quickly. And we also demonstrate the experiments with ablation study. We investigate the effectiveness of the scheduling mapping by Klosky with the ablation study. The partition strategy exposed by Klosky is leveraged for baseline two, baseline one's results are also compared. So we can see the bar graphs from three by three, four by four, and five by four, five topology. And we draw summaries here. So outperform, so Klosky outperforms baseline one and baseline two by 46% and 4%. Etc. So we give two lessons learned from cross key. The first is that we can partition DL model into new OPs that allows better execution performance even for cascaded layer structures in VGG16, VG19, etc. So the improvement of the execution performance is nonlinear to the increased hardware utilization ratio. So we expect and then leave the partition solution in, a, in our future work to investigate the phenomena in depth. So we draw a conclusion here. Now we implement the Bayesian optimization based entropy guided partition axon and is proposed for MIOPS generation. And we also propose a unified formal formulation for the scheduled mapping and two-stage methodology to come in the unified formulation. 
extensive results show that Klosky can achieve 9.55% and 48.48% higher execution performance improvement than baselines. So here are my are my presentations. And thanks for your attention. And my slides also include some references for your reference. Thank you very much.